the sunshine just for you. The president says there's a crisis. The president repeatedly says there's a crisis at the border. Why hasn't he nominated a permanent secretary of Homeland Security or Pentagon chief? Look, the president's moving heaven and earth to try to secure our border. The question isn't why isn't he nominating somebody? Is why isn't Congress doing anything? Why hasn't the he president has taken though? a number of actions. He's got an acting secretary who's more than capable of doing the job. Has really stepped up over the last couple of months. He has significant knowledge, having uh, decades worth of service uh, at the CBP and DHS. We feel very confident in the team we have. The problem is that we don't have Congress working with us to actually fix the problem and we're having to do it alone. It's a sad day when Mexico and the Mexican government is doing more than Democrats in Congress to actually secure the U.S. border. Does the president tell his aides to deny that internal polling showed him trailing Joe Biden? I, look, I think the polling got it completely wrong in 2016. I don't think it's right now. Uh, I'm not going to get into a lot of details, but we feel incredibly good about what the president has been able to accomplish in the first two years of his administration. He's had unprecedented success. We have a booming economy. ISIS is on the run and defeated the caliphate. Uh, we're making better trade deals than we've ever made before, rebuilding the military. The president's got a great story to tell, and we feel very comfortable about where we are. But is his internal poll? I'm sorry. That's his internal polling. Uh, again, I'm not I'm not worried about polling. Um, I'm here at the White House, so I got to be a little bit careful about what I answer. Uh, but the president has an incredible record. He's had tremendous success, and we feel very comfortable about where we are as an administration. Sir, yesterday, President Trump said that the big difference between himself and Richard Nixon is that he's not going to leave. Wanted to know if you wanted to clarify that. Surely he didn't mean that that's the only difference between himself and Richard Nixon. Uh, look, the president's been crystal clear uh, from day one of this absurd witch hunt. Uh, there was no wrongdoing. There was no collusion. There was no obstruction. There were no conspiracies. Uh, I don't think you can be any more plain and simple or outspoken, frankly, than the president has been on this topic. So, sure. Sir, what exactly is the metrics for success with this U.S.-Mexico migration deal? Are there certain numbers that you're hoping to reach? We haven't seen any sort of like, uh, you know, exact details of what you guys are hoping to get from this? Uh, one of the biggest things is that we have hundreds of thousands of people that are coming across the border. Those numbers have to drop. We also have to see the good faith effort that the Mexicans are putting forward, which we're starting to see. Uh, the bottom line is, is that the border is being completely overrun and we have to see something dramatically change. And we're hopeful that we're taking the right steps to make that happen. Sarah, Sarah, why, can't, Sarah, why is it the president has not nominated a secretary of defense or secretary of homeland security. Does he not want the Senate to be able to exercise the advice and consent rule and question his nominees? Not at all. We're going through that process. But again, the president has two uh, incredibly capable individuals in the positions of the acting positions, and we'll move forward with the nomination process. Um, and the president, frankly, is focused on right now making sure that those uh, departments are run and are operating at full capacity, which they're doing under the leadership that's there. Paula, go ahead. Sorry, Andrew. Why did the administration back off pursuing a safe third country provision in this agreement with Mexico? Uh, we haven't backed off. As you see in the agreement, it says that further action will be discussed and determined over the next 90 days, and we're working through that, and those discussions are continuing. Um, and the two presidents have uh, had conversations and made agreements. I'm not going to get ahead of that, but we're certainly not backing off of anything. Last Sarah, question. Sarah, the president's not the only politician in Iowa today. Does he uh, plan to respond to uh, Vice President Joe Biden's remarks that are expected later today? former vice president is expected to kind of lay into not only the president, but the administration and the events of the last two years. Will the president respond directly to Biden? Uh, I'm not sure uh, about that. We'll see what happens on that front. But I think Joe Biden has a lot of questions he needs to answer himself. The idea that he would say that the president uh, poses any type of threat is truly laughable considering he was part of the administration that allowed Russia to interfere in our election. He was part of the administration that allowed Iran to uh, continue to flourish. They gave uh, $1.8 billion to help fund Iran and their continued bad behavior. They allowed China to continue to grow, North Korea. Uh, if anything, I think he's got a lot of explaining to do, and I think that you guys should be asking him those questions. Certainly not the president, who's had unprecedented success in each of those areas and has actually been tough on combating the problems, particularly across the globe and on the foreign policy standpoint. Sarah, Thanks, guys. Sarah, the phone call with Nadler, did they talk